The following broadcast is a companion podcast, The Blessed Living Woman's e-magazine, and is brought to you by The Bonding Place. Our podcasts are available directly from our website through Blog Talk Radio and iTunes. In this episode, your host is Jill Bond with co-host Tris Jones are interviewing Dreama Malloy and we'll be discussing her article, Mom's Miracle, from the Winter 2013 issue, Volume 1, Thankfulness. Check out the free e-magazine at blwemag.com. How do you define a miracle? I know there's probably a seminary definition exactly what a miracle is and what what has to be defined as a miracle. I kind of know that goes in stream because I know most of the people that I use when we say a miracle, it's just our way of giving God glory. Some of us think a sunrise is a miracle. When a granddaughter is born, it's a miracle. But probably officially, it's when God steps out of his normal physics that he set up in the world, like parting the Red Sea. But sometimes... I think it's wonderful to just, if it's how you define how God sees things, then there are miracles everywhere. With that in mind, I think you're going to really enjoy today's article. Dream of Malloy wrote Mom's Miracle for our Blessed Living Winter 2013 edition, and we're going to start off with First, just reading our article. I think you're going to be blessed. For as long as I can remember, my mother was plagued with an assortment of illnesses. She struggled with diabetes, bowel blockage, skin cancer, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, a double heart bypass, and I believe two angioplasties. As if those illnesses and disease weren't enough, she was struck by a car resulting in a broken right shoulder. With all that work against her, she remained God-focused and full of life. Dad feared that Mom, with her myriad of sicknesses, would be the first to die. It didn't happen that way, though, as my dad was stricken with cancer and we lost him at the age of 66, while Mom lived to be almost 92. In the midst of all her suffering, Mom was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, a debilitating disease. Sometimes her legs would just collapse beneath her and bring her to the ground. Most of her extreme pain happened at night, when her legs would cramp, drawing up until she would scream out in pain. When the attacks became too frequent for her to bear, we made a trip to the doctor for relief, but perhaps the treatment today has progressed. But at that time, the doctor would give mom an injection directly in the spine. I saw the needle once and it was huge. I could hear her scream at the moment of injection. She dreaded those treatments, saying that they were about as painful as the attacks. Mom and Dad were members of a Baptist church in Cleveland. My father served as a deacon. One Sunday afternoon, members came to our house and prayed over Mom. They laid hands upon her body and prayed that if it was God's will, that he would take the disease from her. Mom said she actually felt the moment that the disease left her body. She knew that day that she was healed. Upon her next regularly scheduled doctor's appointment, She explained what had happened with the church members and declared herself healed. The doctor looked at my mom sadly and stated that what had occurred wasn't a miracle, but her disease was merely in remission. My mother smiled at him and said, You must not know my God. He cured me. (laughs) Praise the Lord. It was his will that she be healed. She lived 35 more years without another attack. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Dreama. I was thrilled with your um, I was thrilled with your article because recently in our prayer meeting, someone asked me if they knew of anyone that had what they would call a miracle, and I immediately thought, Dreama has one. <laughs> I know the the whole story behind this is just so amazing, and everyone I, I don't I never met your mother, but everyone at our church has wonderful things to say about her. She was a wonderful person. She had tremendous faith in in God. Her whole life really was God-centered. She drifted away a little when she married my father, I think, because he was not a member of the church at that time. And uh, she drifted. But 
she had so much schooling at a young age that it stayed with her. And then she came back to it later in life. Uh, but when this healing took place, there was no doubt in her mind. I can remember her looking at me and saying, it's gone. I felt it. It actually just left my body. I felt it leave. Oh, God is so good. And, and he is. What, what, what a miracle. Uh, I, at that time, I wasn't sure that that had happened, but it did. She had the faith. And later, to, to tell you a little side story to this, later on in life, my father came down with cancer. And she had the same group of people come to the house and lay hands on him and pray over him. And he was not healed. And my mother did make a statement that I really and truly believe was wrong. She said to him, well, you probably didn't have enough faith. And that's not why at all that he wasn't healed. It wasn't it, God's will. It was not God's will. God had another plan for my father. So she was a little misguided there, but she was a wonderful prayer warrior. I'm glad you said that because I've known Christians and I've had well, the times I've been in the hospital that some people look at, I'm sick because of something I did. And then I always look at the scriptures when Jesus said, it's so God can be glorified. And I always think of, of Paul with his thorn in the flesh. And sometimes it's God's will that we're healed and he gets the glory. And sometimes it's his will that we're not healed and he gets the glory. Right, he's the winner all the way around. Right. Everything happens in his, in his time and for his purpose. And we trust him and he knows what he's doing because how many people have come to us? I, that was son, as you all know, Trent with autism. And he's had plateaus where he would be healed a certain bit or make some progress. But because of him, we have worked with thousands of families across the world with um, teaching them about God and working with Trent and the ministry that we have. And of course now I would instantly want him healed, but I have to trust God. There's a reason God hasn't healed Trent and he has the autism. And one of the reasons is Trent has the deepest faith of anybody I know. And it's his amazing, prayers are so simple. And he's just like, trust God. I mean, sometimes he just looks like, well, Jesus has it. And it's just kind of like, why are you worried? Or what does that matter? I'll never forget 9-11 happened. And the, here's another plane, and here's now the Pentagon, and here's all this. And I'm just, oh, my Lord. And Trent just looked at me and just said, pray. And it was just so simple, and we grabbed hands. It was like, Mom, don't fret. Turn the news off and just pray. You know, my mother passed away September 10th, 2011. And I think if she were here today, and you ask her, what do you think was the miracle of your life, besides your own salvation, of course, mm -hmm. that she would say that my daughter finally surrendered to the Lord. Oh, mm -hmm. and we love you. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's the miracle of my life. Yeah. And you wonder how many hours and hours she prayed for that. Yeah. A lifetime. She yes. was praying her whole life for me to surrender myself to the Lord. She could never understand why I, I didn't do it, and I don't understand why I didn't do it either because my life is so rich with God in it, and it was so empty without him. And that is a miracle of uh, salvation. The longer I study it, the more I'll understand that I don't understand it. But there's layers and layers and layers to what he did and is constantly doing. There's that instant scent that happens when you're born again, and then, then there's that daily, and then I just, oh, what it's going to be like when we actually walk face to face. Yes. You know, if, if, if my mother knew now that I'm planning to start a Bible study class and that I would be the teacher. Oh, she, would be, she, she would be so amazed. I, I hope somewhere in heaven she's aware of this. <laughs> she would be so pleased. But also that's comforting for all of us because I'm sure everyone has unsaved family members that we're praying for just earnestly that you don't give up. You keep praying. You keep praying. You just, sometimes I feel like that um, beggar woman at the door, the you know, let me in, let me in. You know, Lord, please. <laughs> I'm Please. living proof there's hope. Keep praying, folks. You know, one of the things that I think of, my mother probably knew your mother. She did. Yes. Um, and my mother was a praying, praying mother. Um, one of the things that the Bible tells us 
is that our prayers tells us a couple of things, that our prayers rise before the Lord as incense mm. and that they are kept and our tears are kept in a, in a bottle, or at least that's the imagery that the, that the Word gives us. My mother prayed for me every day without fail. My parents, when my dad was alive, prayed for me, for all of us kids, every day without fail. And one of the things that that I felt so deeply when Mother passed away was the loss of my prayer covering. My yes. prayer covering was gone. That's what, when my mother died. I said that my mom could pray before I'd even ask her what to pray for. Yes, she was already praying for. It. Yes. Yeah, my mother always knew what what I needed. So yeah. But one of the things that that God has comforted me with is that my mother's prayers and your mother's prayers and your mother's prayers still exist. God's still aware of them. But God also used that to convict me personally, well, who are you praying for every day? Yes. Who are you covering with your prayers? Who are you the spiritual umbrella for? So I promised the Lord, I covenanted with the Lord to pick up the prayer mantle that my mother laid down on this earth when she died. Um, and I pray for my brother and my sister and my own family daily. Um, but it's just, it just, you know, we sit here today now on this earth and fellowship like this and even fellowship with our mothers, but this kind of fellowship goes on for eternity. I'm going to get to meet your mother. I don't know if you met my mother or not, but... No, I didn't, but I look forward to it. Yeah, yes. and that's actually going to happen someday. That's amazing. That's just really awesome. amazing. We have so much to hope for. Like you said, the, yeah. the contrast between your life before you were saved right. and now. And after. If people only knew the difference, mm -hmm. everyone would be rushing. Right, if they knew what, Jesus what the, uh, truly God can do for you, it would be like a Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there would be a stampede. There would be a stampede to the, to the church mm -hmm. doors. Yeah, we were talking earlier um, off off mic or whatever about how um, handling the news and everything that's going on. And I just don't know how people handle the news with everything that's happening here. If they didn't have Christ to know that there's a plan, his side wins, and everything is orchestrated and God's in complete control. And nothing can happen to me that God doesn't allow. I'm safe. That's right. I am safe, and I don't have to have um, a panic. They always say the things women want in a marriage is security, and men want respect. But that part of security, I get that from the Lord. Mm -hmm. He works through Alan, but I um, am totally secure that nothing is going to happen to me that God That's isn't right. in control of. God and controls he everything, and everything's part of his plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Even this is with your mom, because she's got quite a list of, of ailments on how God did that. And then that she gave God the glory. She did. She did. She gave God the glory, and she went through all of those, those diseases and, and, and mishaps. And she was a strong, strong Christian through it all. So, you know, it's easy to be a Christian when everything is going your way. But when you have misfortune... Slap you in the face. Mm -hmm. Where's your faith? Yes. That's the key. And I, I, and I so agree with you that, unfortunately, there are some Christians who think that all Christian is a ticket to 100% wealth and 100% health, and they're never going to be challenged or have any conflict, and that somehow being saved, you're, you just got chosen for the Super Bowl team, when in reality, God is discipling us, He's letting things happen to us and all to mature and become disciples and to love him. And I'm just so glad that we can be free beyond that little earthly combined because there's so much more going on with God Absolutely. than just our little earthly shells here. I just uh, know that reading the Bible is, is a gift. The Word and, 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 as you said, the many layers of Word you get the wisdom, it just keeps peeling back and peeling back, and you read the same scriptures 
over and over again, and each time you, you see something you didn't see before, it's, it's a living work. He's a living God. Because our life situations change. Go ahead, Trish. You had said something a little bit earlier in how much your life has changed since you truly surrendered to the Lord. Yes. What so many people, particularly those who, who look at us as Christians, what they do not understand, and and a lot of Christians don't understand this either, we're not necessarily talking about lifestyle changes or letting go of bad behaviors or sinful behaviors or whatever. We're not talking about moralistic goodness. Our lives do change, but they change because our hearts change. Mm -hmm. That's what changed. Mm -hmm. We're talking about feeling safe and secure. The love and the grace and the mercy that God gives to us as believers. That's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. And what he has done for us. Yes, our lifestyles begin to change. Yes, we begin to drop sinful behaviors and, and adopt new behaviors that glorify him. And that is true. But it's not, it's not the number one thing in following Christ. And unfortunately, sometimes we give people that impression that, well, if you accept Jesus Christ, you're going to be instantly delivered. It's kind of like healing. You're going to be instantly delivered from alcoholism or drug addiction or smoking cigarettes or promiscuous behavior or whatever. Sometimes God works that way. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes it's a progress. I've stumbled. And, and I've stumbled on the same problem over and over again. And still, I still stumble. Yes. And it's, but it's what a did change, in progress. <laughs> what did change instantly was your heart. My heart changed instantly. Yes. Instantly. My heart was filled with joy. That's what I try to, to tell the people that, that I know are not saved, is this sense of peace and joy with all of this going on around me in this country, I have this peace and this joy from, from knowing Christ that makes it bearable. I couldn't bear this earth, I think, <clears throat> if I didn't have Christ. I don't know how I did it. As, as we do this broadcast, we're in the Christmas season, just coming out of the Christmas season. and um, The Prince of Peace was born. And we look at our world today, and it's anything but peaceful. But we as believers have perfect peace because God is no longer at war with us. We have mm -hmm. peace with God through Jesus Christ. And that's the source of our joy and our security. And that's why our behaviors do begin to change. It changes out of gratefulness and love and empowerment of the spirit we don't change first to earn god's favor isn't that wonderful yes. every other religion on the planet there's like a checklist if i yes. do these 23 things or i do these once i witness to so many people i don't it, it, it baffles my mind i know sometimes words just don't seem enough to say it's grace there's not one single thing i can do or not do it's God. It's what Jesus did on the cross. There's nothing you can do to earn his love, and there's, there's nothing, nothing you can, can do, do to, to lose, lose it. Hallelujah. I, you know, I, mean, I, I, I could just rest on that, that for the rest of my life. But the thing is, and then what I want to say too, but because of what he did, I'm so filled with gratitude. I want to do something to say I'm thankful and I'm glad. Dream up. Did you have any closing thoughts? And then um, and then I'm going to ask if you'd pray for those that are hearing us today. Well, the only thought that I would like to close with is that mother's prayers are always listened to. God That's always so hears a mother's prayer. And I know she made many prayers, but probably her biggest prayer was for my salvation. And uh, it was granted, Mom, wherever you're at, you must know that. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I come to you today as a wretched human sinner. 
I have given my life over to you, and, and I pray that you help me in my walk toward righteousness. I, I pray for the Christians, Lord, because everyone's always praying for the sinners, and, and I would like to make this prayer for the Christian who's uh, it, having their daily walk and having struggles with their weaknesses. I pray, Lord, that you boost their confidence in you and uh, help them in their struggle. Help me, Lord, as I walk ever so much closer to you. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've given me. I thank you for, your, for the salvation that you've provided for me. And I live for you. You are my living God, my Lord and Savior. And I pray to you, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. And thank you so much for this article. And I've already read your next article. And I just kind of want you definitely want to look for the next magazine because her article is another winner. Thank you so much, Drina. And thank, thank you, you, Trish, thank for, you. Thank you. for um, being my co host today. You're welcome. Special thanks to our co-hosts, Dreamer Malloy and Trish Jones, our staff and guest writers, and me, Bethany Vaughn. This broadcast has been brought to you by The Bonding Place. Special thanks to our co-hosts, Dreamer Malloy and Trish Jones, our staff and guest writers, and me, Bethany Vaughn.